my friends. It is Wednesday and it's time for another youth message. And lo and behold, God spoke to me again in my devotions. And so I want to share with you what I came across. So I am reading from Psalms chapter 37, starting on verse seven. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. And then I want to read for you from um, my Grace for the Moment from Max Licato. It's one of my books I use. And this is what it said for today. Whew, and this is what got me. Okay, so here we go. Anger. It's easy to define. It's the noise of the soul. Anger. The unseen irritant of the heart. Anger. The relentless invader of silence. The louder it gets, the more desperate we become. Some of you are thinking you don't have any idea how hard my life has been. And you're right. I don't. But I have a very clear idea how miserable your future will be unless you deal with your anger. X-ray the world of the vengeful and behold the tumor of bitterness. Black, menacing, malignant. Malignant. Carcinoma of the spirit. Its fatal fibers creep around the edge of your heart and ravage it. Yesterday, you can't alter. But your reaction to yesterday, you can. The past, you cannot change. But your response to your past, you can. That just kind of grabbed me a lot. There's been so much that has been just like, Ugh! so many things going on. And I could just, it's not all COVID and it's not all racial injustice. It's a lot of things going on. And I just was getting frustrated, mostly frustrated, not necessarily angry. Some of it was anger, but I was like, it's really bringing me down and it's making me upset and I've got a lot of things going on at home and I was just like enough enough already and it started to bother me and so it's just amazing how God speaks and so whenever I read this today I was just like Ooh. and I started thinking back to when I taught at St. Bonds and so I was thinking about the first day I walked in that building I walked in to teach sixth grade scared. I was scared to death. I didn't want to teach sixth graders. I was petrified of teaching sixth graders. Can you believe that? I was petrified of sixth graders, but I was. I'd never really worked with kids that old. I'd always worked with, you know, about third grade, and I was kind of scared of sixth graders. And it turned out God does amazing things. And it was only supposed to be a one-year thing. But I walked in the door and I was immediately wrapped up in hugs by every single teacher, the secretary, the person running the computer lab. I mean, everyone came up and wrapped me up in hugs and told me, that they're here for me and what can they do for me and you just let us know and we've got your back we've got your back we're here for you and it turned out i was there 15 years and i really 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 loved my job and i really really loved teaching sixth grade i really loved teaching sixth grade i loved teaching math that was like my passion and i didn't even know i really had a passion for teaching math until it just kind of happened that I got to, we became departmentalized and I was the math teacher and I found this incredible joy, this incredible passion in teaching math. And, you know, you get into a happy spot and then something comes along and it disrupts it. And that's when you get mad. That's when you get 
angry. And that's what happened to me. My whole time there, I had a lot of naysayers against me because I walked into a Catholic school system, not Catholic, with no plans of becoming Catholic. And the head priest at the time told me point blank, I'm not happy about this. You're not Catholic and I think you should be Catholic. And I said, no, no, you got to prove it to me. I, you got to prove to me why. And telling me I'm going to hell is not proving anything to me. And so um, in a year's time, he's like, yeah, you don't, you don't need to be Catholic. And then a new priest came in and he said the same thing. And he was there when I left. And he was adamant I needed to be Catholic. And then one day we had the sit down discussion and he said, oh my goodness, you don't need to be Catholic. You don't need to be Catholic at all. He goes, you've got your heart right. You are right with God. You don't need to be Catholic. I was wrong. You were right. But there were other people, people in the parish. Um, I had an administrator. I had several co-workers. That as time went on, they started attacking me for my faith. And, you know, you can only turn your cheeks so many times. And I'm not St. Paul. <laughs> I'm not the Apostle Paul. And it was really grating on me. It was making me mad. The attacks were getting very vicious. And they were very wrong. And they were very hurtful. And the things that were being said, um, there were lies made up about me. Um, and then those lies, they were never corroborated to prove that they were lies, even though I had proof that they were lying, that people were lying about me. It was my word against them because I wasn't Catholic. I wasn't given the benefit of the doubt. And that's literally what happened. That's literally what happened um, was I was told, well, you're not Catholic, so you don't have no leg to stand on. And it was really messing with me and my anger was getting the best of me. And so the day I walked in, I was greeted with hugs and um, love. And the day I left, four teachers came up and hugged me and told me they'll miss me. And most of those teachers were there the first day I walked in the building. Everything changed. Do I miss the school? No. Do I miss teaching? No. Will I ever go back to teaching? Probably not. Because of what happened there? It changed me and it hurt me. It hurt me very deeply. Um, I ended up going into subbing. I subbed for a year and loved, loved that. I wasn't judged. I was necessary. I was needed. I was welcomed. I was loved. And then for two years, I worked at Platt Center Elementary in the special ed department. And that was incredible. It was amazing. Would I ever go to back to doing something like that? Yeah, in a heartbeat, I would. But will I ever go back to the classroom? No, I don't think so. Not unless God really lays it upon my heart that I need to go back. But the anger within me about what happened to me at St. Bond's is part of who I am. But I don't let it control me anymore. It's still there. I have released it. I have forgiven the people who hurt me. I haven't told them that. I haven't called them up and said, hey, I forgive you. I haven't written any letters. I haven't gone to them because that's not necessary. I was hurting my relationship with God by holding my anger. And so I had to let go of it. And right now there's so much anger going on around us. And I'm tired of it. I'm ready to get rid of Facebook. 
because of all the hate that is being thrown out on Facebook, telling people that they're wrong because they're wearing a mask or because they're not wearing a mask or because they feel one way or another because they're speaking out against racial injustice or they're not speaking out or because they're saying one thing or not saying something. And I've been very silent about it. I haven't said a word. Why? Why haven't I said anything? Because I don't want the backlash. I don't want somebody saying something because they disagree with me and then it gets taken wrong. It gets misconstrued. So I haven't said a word. I haven't said a word. What I do need to say is God is love and God created each and every person in this world. He created you. He created me. And that's all that matters. And if you truly love, if you admit that you are a child of God and that you are loved by your Heavenly Father, then you need to also understand that every other person walking the face of this earth, doesn't matter man, woman, child, doesn't matter race, doesn't matter gender, doesn't matter how much money they make or how little they make, how much they own, how little they own, it matters not one iota. Because at some point we're all going to stand before God. <coughs> and each and every one of those things will mean absolutely nothing. Not one thing. But what will matter is your relationship with God. That's the only thing that matters. And I want to show everyone God's love. And I need to show God's love through my actions and through my words. How I speak to people. How I react to situations. And if that means keeping my mouth shut, I will keep my mouth shut because I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want anger to be the forefront of what people say because it doesn't bring about peace. And the other thing people need to realize is there's only been one time, one time in this world that there's ever truly been peace. And that was in the Garden of Eden before sin ever entered the world. There's only been one time. So in all the time of the creation of this world from beginning to now, there's only been one time of peace and that was in the Garden of Eden. And you and I weren't there. We don't know what peace looks like. We have no idea because we've never seen it. We've never experienced it. But I can tell you again, there will be peace. Not now, not today, not tomorrow, not until God comes and takes us home to heaven and he creates his new world, his new earth, and then there will be peace again. So if people are saying we need to work on peace, yes, we definitely need to work on peace. We need to be kind. We need to be loving. We need our thoughts and our words and our actions to breed peace. But will there be peace in this world? No. And don't think that there will be because there won't. If it hasn't happened in, <laughs> since Garden of Eden, what makes you think it's going to happen now? The peace is here. The peace of God. That's where your Garden of Eden is, right here. So I want to give you back to these thoughts about anger. Anger is the noise of the soul, the unseen irritant of the heart, the relentless invader of silence. Anger, it's loud. the louder it gets, the more desperate it becomes. It is vengeful, and it is like a tumor of bitterness, black, menacing, and malignant, a carcinoma of the spirit. Yesterday you cannot alter, but your reaction to yesterday you can. The past you cannot change, but your response to your past you can. Amen.